Hi guys, Andrew here with headphones.com. Welcome to the Headphone Show, and today we're gonna to take a look at the Dunu Zen. This is a single dynamic driver IEM that comes in right at around $6.99, and it's got a lot of people really excited. Let's check it out. As a disclaimer, this unit was sent to me by Dunu for evaluation, but I haven't been paid to say anything in particular about it, and all thoughts and opinions are my own. Of course, just like with my other reviews, if you guys are interested in the measurements of this, I'll have left a link in the description to the Headphone Community Forum, where you can find that along with what other people are saying about this as well. Now, just as we get going here, I do want to mention that this is an IEM that's been very exciting for many people. It's been on everybody's radar, in part because of how outstanding the technical performance was from the Dunu Luna, the flagship. This one has a lot of people excited because it comes in at a much more modest price tag than the Luna. And it's kind of like the difference between the Focal Utopia, which uses beryllium for over-ear headphones, and the Focal Clear, which uses a magnesium, uh, aluminum magnesium uh, driver. But before getting into the sound quality, let's just go over the build, design, comfort, and accessories. I love the look of these IEMs. They're black and have this sort of Starship Enterprise look to them. This is a much smaller IEM than you might find with the typical acrylic shell stuff like Dunu's SA6 or the Theo Audio Monarch and Clairvoyance, making it also very comfortable. I do find though that the fit is uh, very important to get right and it's not always the easiest to get right, at least for my ear, uh, because while it is very comfortable, um, this has a similar kind of style of fit to the Luna where it's better if it's sort of inserted all the way in. Um, which doesn't always happen. For the cable, this of course is Dunu's very famous and exceptional cable uh, that has the uh, modular system on the end so you can switch out the different terminations. You can use a 2.5 millimeter or a Pentacon if you'd like um, and they do include that. Um, I'm just using a 3.5 millimeter here and of course yeah for the cable just like with the SA6 um, it's phenomenal. This Dunu's cables are class leading in my opinion. They're better than just about everything else that I've used. As far as accessories you do get a carry case like this here, and you do get a number of tips as well. So you get a bunch of silicon ones, and then you also get some foam ones. One interesting thing that's different is that you do also get this little baggie here that's different from the SA6, uh, and this is so that you can put the IEMs in the baggie and they won't bash into each other when they're in the case. Um, and that's just because, you know, you don't want these to sort of chip away um, being sort of thrown into a backpack or something like that. Also, they're a little bit on the heavier side, but this also makes them feel a little bit more premium. So it's an interesting combination. Um, definitely a little bit heavier than the uh, Moondrop Illumination. Okay, how does the Dunu Zen sound? Well, uh, let's begin by talking about the technical performance. And for all the reports that have been out there talking about the Zen and how excited people are for it, I think rest assured your excitement has uh, paid off in this case. This is a remarkably well-performing IEM for technical performance, especially in the bass and in the mids. So what this does exceptionally well is detail, yes, but more important than that is that the dynamic driver in here gives everything an extra sense of physicality and weight to it that multi-balanced armature hybrid and tribrid configurations can't seem to do. Um, at least I haven't heard any yet that are able to do that. When it comes to soundstage and imaging, I don't find the Zen to be particularly spacious when compared with tribrid, hybrid, and multi-BA configurations like the The Audio Monarch and Clairvoyance. But when compared with other single dynamic driver IEMs like the Moondrop Illumination and other Moondrop single, single dynamic driver IEMs, the Zen is actually quite a bit better. And then when it comes to layering and instrument separation specifically, I actually find the Zen to be reasonably competitive, um, even though, you know, the soundstage itself isn't as, you know, spread out or anything like that. It's a little bit more towards you. Now, lastly, when it comes to timbre, of course, this doesn't have the dreaded BA timbre, and it also doesn't have the elevated third harmonic distortion, which yet again leads me to correlate those two. But it also doesn't have the most natural frequency response related timbre, and this is where I think the Moondrop Illumination wins out. And speaking of frequency response, let's talk about that next. Once again, if you guys are unfamiliar with this stuff or you're not sure what any of this means, I've done a whole video on that, and you guys can check that out. It's linked in the description. So I'm going to throw the graphs up on the screen here, and let's begin by talking about the bass. The Dunu Zen's, I almost said Luna, the Dunu Zen's bass is excellent, but you will notice that it's a little bit more focused towards the mid bass and the upper bass. So while the sub bass has good presence to it, it isn't elevated over the mid bass and the upper bass, like I think um, might be more desirable. And it also doesn't have as distinct of a bass shelf there as it comes down towards the lower mids, you know, coming, coming down around 200 hertz. But this is also where it's interesting and the Dunu Zen really walks that line very carefully between too much upper bass and mid bass presence 
and and just the right amount. Um, and also this is helped by the fact that the dynamic driver in here is so technically capable that it stays controlled, you know, even during busy passages, um, and it doesn't, you know, really bleed into the mids all that much. Um, I think this is also in part because the the mids are a little bit um, pulled back there in the in the lower mids, uh, at least relative to something like the clairvoyance. So this kind of keeps the bass from crowding out other elements of the mix. Um, again, it walks that line very carefully, and I think it's extremely tastefully done. Uh, I, I really love the bass on, on the Dunu Zen. Yes, it could have a little bit more sub-bass presence there, but I think overall it's totally fine. The other nice thing about this is that if you're listening to music that doesn't fully token the sub-bass frequencies, you guys have heard me talk about this before, this is a little bit more versatile on the bass because you're still going to get that impactful, satisfying bass even for, you know, recordings that aren't that great. Now, unfortunately, it's not as versatile when it comes to the upper mids. This is a little bit more genre or recording specific because the upper mids are just a little bit too far forward for my liking. It's bordering a little bit on shout, but it doesn't ever quite get to the point where it's too much. Um, but there are definitely times, like for example, when listening to male vocals, something like Michael Bublé, for example, it, where it just it, it's just bordering on the shrill side of things um, and so it is a little bit hot there still for me of course the flip side of this is that you need to have the ear gain there for a little bit of clarity and this definitely does give you that again this is where the mids and the bass the detail and the punch and the dynamics and all of the technical performance aspects of it really shine through. I think if it didn't have all those technical aspects to it, it wouldn't be quite as good here. But uh, because it does, it just adds this extra sense of engagement and it's a really interesting presentation for the music. Um, again, I'm, I'm not saying that this is better than the Clairvoyance or the Monarch in the bass to mid range or anything like that. I think the overall tuning is, is uh, probably better in the Clairvoyance. But the way that this presents the music makes it so that this kind of tuning is actually appropriate uh, for, for the bass and for the mids. Where things run into trouble a little bit um, with the Dunu Zen, in my opinion, is in the treble. You'll notice that there's a 8.5k peak. Now keep in mind that this is using the Gross RIO402 coupler and not the 0045. So there is a bit of uh, damping there at around 8k. Um, and this still shows a bit of a peak there. So that peak is actually a little bit stronger. And of course, it's also a little uneven there for around 6.5k, so the lower treble. So what this means is that for some of the consonant tones, occasionally, you know, the S's, F's, and T's come across a little bit too forward. But at the same time, this peak, in my opinion, is kind of a requirement given what's going on with the rest of this kind of tuning. So if you think about it, a slightly boosted upper mid-range presence, that needs to have balance in the treble for the resonant harmonics above that, right? And if you look at the Zen's, the rest of the Zen's tuning, it doesn't really have that much presence in the lower treble, and it doesn't really have that much presence in the upper, upper treble. So like the last little octave, it kind of rolls off there on the Zen. So the only real way to kind of ensure that it's still engaging in the treble is to have this sort of mid treble peak there. Now, obviously I would have preferred it if this was filled in, and I really think this is where the Moondrop Illumination does a better job. Um, and it's a little bit more even there. But on that subject, this is also where tip rolling can really help. So I found that when using the foam tips, this peak is lessened uh, noticeably. And when using the silicon tips, the peak is enhanced a little bit. So you can play around with the different tips to get a better, um, uh, you know, a more smooth response there. I did find that both the Dakoni foam tips and the ones that are included in the Zen's case um, are were more to my liking and even things out a little bit there. Still, this is also at a point where I think it could benefit from a little bit of EQ. Now, I'm not the kind of person who likes to EQ my IEMs because I use them portably, but I know there's a lot of people out there who don't, who just use them you know, while at their desk. And the cool thing about this is that this actually would be a reason to EQ more so than on other IEMs because the technical performance here and the way that it presents the music is much more similar to that of over-ear headphones than what you might find with multi-BAs or hybrids or tribrids. And because of that, I can see the Dunu Zen being kind of like a desktop replacement or like a, instead of getting an over your headphone, you could get something like the Zen. And it really does close that gap um, as far as technical performance goes. Um, now, again, I'm not saying that this is better for technical performance than something like the The Audio Monarch. It's just presenting it in a different way and in a way that I think is in many ways more interesting and it has more potential and it's more engaging. So in some ways, this is kind of like trying to compare 
a dynamic driver over your headphones with planar magnetic over your headphones, um, where they just they have a different way of presenting details and different way of presenting the music. And I gotta say, when it comes to IEMs, I do prefer the way that dynamic drivers do that, even though in many cases, the tuning for tribrids, hybrids, and multi-BAs is a little bit more palatable. Okay, speaking of comparisons, let's now do some. And I'm gonna compare this first to the Dunu Luna. And I do think that this is like the clear to the Utopia. I, mean, I think it's that kind of difference. It's not as technically capable as the Luna, as far as detail. It's not as impactful, but it's very close, actually. Um, it's, a, it's a small step down. And the tuning on the Zen is actually more agreeable uh, than the Luna, at least to my ear. The Luna, I found, didn't have enough treble energy, and and it just had too much upper mid range shout there. Whereas with the Zen, it doesn't it doesn't have quite that same kind of presentation. It's a little bit more balanced there. Still, it's not as balanced as I would like. And there are other IEMs that I think do a better job there in the treble. Uh, compared to the Final Audio A8000, same thing as the Luna. Uh, it's a single beryllium driver IEM. The A8000 has, I think, a little bit better bass response there in the sub bass. Um, and it's also a little bit more detailed, but unfortunately the A8000 is quite a bit more fatiguing to listen to as a result of a fairly strong 5.5k peak. There's also some other issues there in the treble above that as well, whereas on the Zen it's not as fatiguing there at all. The A8000 is also nowhere near as comfortable. I find that this sort of jagged edge sticks into my ear in an awkward way. Uh, whereas the, the Zen is much more comfortable there. Now, the most interesting comparison I think is going to be with the Moondrop Illumination. The Illumination is a little bit more balanced there in the treble, as I mentioned, so it has also a nicer timbre to it. But I'm actually going to give the technical performance edge to the Zen, especially in the bass and in the mids. The Zen is more impactful. It has a little bit better of a bass response. The bass is um, elevated a little bit more appropriately on the Zen, whereas I think it's a little bit too relaxed there on the Illumination. But yeah, I think it's really going to come down to that. If you prefer a more balanced and even and natural sounding treble response, the illumination is going to be the way to go. But if you want a little bit better detail in the bass, a little bit better texture presentation in the bass, a little bit nicer mids as well for detail, then the Zen is going to be the way to go. And lastly, the apples to oranges comparison here compared to the Monarch Clairvoyance and SA6. Those all do have a more palatable and more agreeable frequency response and tonal balance. Um, they're a little bit more versatile as well, especially for the upper mids and the treble response. But again, the way that this is presenting music, it, it's just got much more physicality and weight to everything that once again makes it a little bit closer to dynamic driver over your headphones. Now, once again, I'm not saying that this is more detailed than the Theodio Monarch, for example. What I'm saying is that the way that this is presenting those details is more engaging and more interesting. And that's actually gonna to lead to my conclusion here. At the $700 price mark, $700, $800, where all of these you know, newer IMs are falling, the Clairvoyance, the Monarch, the Zen, the Illumination, and even down to the SA6 at $550, the Tribrids, Hybrids, and Multi-BAs are still able to have a little bit more of a refined tuning there overall, but I prefer the engaging qualities of the Zen. If I could have my wish, it would be the Zen's technical performance and the way that it presents the music with the The Audio Clairvoyance's tonal balance and frequency response. Obviously that's not always doable and there are always gonna be trade-offs here. And so I think if it's me personally buying an IEM for portable use and I'm never gonna EQ, I think I still gravitate a little bit more to either the SA6, the The Audio Clairvoyance or the The Audio Monarch but if you are looking for something that is a little bit more recording specific, that when it does work, it really works, uh, the Zen is potentially the more interesting IEM to listen to. So while I'm not going to give this as straightforward a recommendation as the Dunu SA6, the The Audio Clairvoyance and the Monarch, I am still gonna give it a recommendation for anybody wanting that kind of dynamic driver sound. And out of all of those dynamic driver IEMs, the, the newer ones like the Zen, the Illumination, the Luna and the A8000, the Zen is going to be my pick. I know there's campfire audio ones as well, but the Zen is, is the one that I would choose. Um, and I would probably then just use this as like a over-ear headphone replacement because I, I think this gets closer to that kind of sound than what these other multi-BAs and tribrids and hybrids do. Anyways, that does it for this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.